Hey everyone, Joe here, and I'm so excited to share with you today one of my favorite floral accessories, the floral clutch bags. Now this gorgeous little clutch bag is one of my absolute favorite little designs that I came up with maybe four or five years ago now that I think is just a chic, cool alternative to the traditional bridal bouquet or to the traditional bridesmaids bouquet. And in our session today, I'm gonna to be teaching you all the steps of how to recreate your own gorgeous little floral accessories. Let's have a look at the sundries we're gonna to require to make our floral clutch bag today. To begin with, we're gonna need an acrylic clutch bag. Now I purchased my clutch bags from Amazon, but I'm sure you can get them from any other online retailer. These are really simple acrylic clutch bags. The key note is that obviously they are transparent. So when you're purchasing, make sure you grab a transparent clutch bag. The next material we're really gonna need is we're gonna be looking at our art foam. This art foam is really readily available here in the UK. It comes in a variety of different colors. Each individual piece costs around 75 pence to around about a pound per sheet. It also comes in a wide variety of colors. I'm going to work with the white today, but you can work with any variety of color that might suit your floral palette. The other materials that we'll be using include a pencil, which will help us sketch out the forms that we need to make our floral clutch flag. And also we're gonna be working with the Oasis Floral Cold Glue. Now the floral glue is one of the easiest, coolest materials to come onto the market in the past, I would say five to 10 years. And we're gonna be using it today as the mechanic to hold all our floral materials in place. I have a few little tips and techniques when working with the floral glue. The first one is I often use a glass tumbler or tea light holder um, just to help me keep the glue upright. So when I'm working with the glue, applying it to a flower for example, when I finish I can then place it back into the tumbler which keeps the whole tube of glue upright. This stops any spillage or it stops any uh, pooling of the glue onto the table and it just makes the whole process a little bit easier. I'll also be using a paper plate. This is for another gluing technique which I'll discuss later on. As you see the materials in front of us are super simple and we don't require too many different components to work with. This really is quite an easy accessible piece. Let's take a look at the floral material we're gonna to need to create our piece today. To begin, let's look at our spray roses. Here we have two beautiful spray roses which we're gonna use in our floral clutch bag. We have white bubbles and we have royal porcelina. For our next piece, we're gonna be using the white astrantia, gorgeous secondary flower, and that's gonna be combined with the white ranunculus. The white ranunculus is gonna act as our focal flower in the piece today. Really, really beautiful, really delicate, and packed with petals and texture to really bring out the focal of our piece. Next, we have some Allium Neapolitium. This fantastic early spring Allium with these beautiful little tiny white blooms. We'll be using these as a final tertiary flower in our piece accompanied with the Fritillaria persica. When we use our piece today, we're gonna to actually focus on these smaller blooms just at the top, not the very dark ones at the bottom, just the lighter ones to really bring out that mauvey gray kind of texture and tone. We're gonna combine these with Fritillaria melagaris, this beautiful, really gorgeous snake's head Fritillary, which we'll use throughout the piece. And we're coming on to the kangaroo paw, the Enzigo Xanthus. This one is called Diamond Pearl. This fantastic, lovely gray texture we'll be using as well. Finally, working towards the jasmine. This lovely, beautiful, gorgeous little jasmine buds will be tucking in right towards the end just to add a little bit of texture to finish. Let's begin with our first step. We're gonna start by taking our acrylic clutch bag and I want you to open it up You'll notice, first of all, that often they'll have these little perspex um, kind of folders right in the center that'll just keep the bag from opening fully. We're going to have to remove those to make our floral clutch bag. To begin, we're going to take a floral knife and just trim directly down through that plastic, just so it opens up fully. We're going to do this both sides of the clutch bag like so. You'll notice at this stage that there is a protective film on both sides of your clutch bag. I would absolutely advise keeping this on as what this will do, this will protect the acrylic until we're ready to reveal it to our client or once we've delivered it for the wedding. In my opinion, keeping this on just makes, uh, it gives you a little bit of an insurance policy in case you have any glue or any flower stems or it gets scratched on any surface that you're working on. In the next step, we're gonna take our knife and I want you to trim out this little bit of plastic that you just see hanging in excess on the inside of the clutch bag. I'm gonna take my knife and just very carefully trim this off so we have a nice, neat, clear clutch bag which we can work towards. For our next step, we're gonna to need to cover our mechanics. So to begin, I want you to close up your clutch bag, place it to one side, and take your piece of art foam and place it in the middle of your table. 
We're then gonna take our acrylic clutch bag and I want you to line it up with the edge of the art foam so you have a really neat straight edge on the left and a straight edge on the top as well. Take your pencil and just sketch the outline of the clutch bag down both sides so that we can create a piece of art foam that is exactly the same size as the back or the rear of the clutch bag. We're then gonna take some scissors and trim this out very carefully following the lines you just drew. This piece of art foam that we just cut out, this will act as the backing for our floral handbag, but we also need a piece to cover the inside too. What I would like you to do on this occasion is draw a piece exactly the same size. You can draw around the clutch bag or you can draw around the piece of art foam which you just cut out and cut this out again. For our next step, I want you to take a ruler. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim down this second piece of art foam until it's just a little bit thinner and a little bit shorter than the first piece that we originally cut. Place the ruler directly on top of the art foam and give yourself around about a centimeter or so just to trim down the side and trim a little off the top too. A centimeter to half a centimeter should be absolutely plenty. Take your scissors and trim off this excess art foam. All right, so now we've taken our two pieces of art foam. We have one larger piece, which will go on the outside of our acrylic clutch, and we have one piece which will go on the inside of our acrylic clutch, which will act as the medium to hold our botanical material. In general, I find they open easier when you click the bag backwards, so then this side will be our front, and this side will be our back. I'm gonna take off the protective coating from the back of my clutch bag, leaving the coating firmly on the front just like so. Next, we're gonna take our piece of art foam and a little bit of the Oasis cold glue. And I'm just gonna place a couple of zigzags of glue going right the way down the piece of art foam. Now, if you don't want to use art foam or can't source any, there are other materials you can use instead, such as different craft papers, different decorative papers, or even some fabrics like felt, as long as they don't fray. All of these materials can be used in exactly the same way and can give you different variations and different textures to play with as you create your design. Now we've finished adhering the cold glue to the back of the art foam. What I want you to do is just very simply take the piece and lay it directly onto the back of the clutch bag. Pat down gently and make sure that all the sides fully adhere to the floral clutch. Repeat the process by taking the smaller piece of art foam and applying glue in the same way. We're going to take this piece of art foam and just tuck it very lightly towards the inside of the clutch bag, which will give us a base onto which we can apply our floral material. Pat the art foam down, especially in the corners, making sure it sticks really, really nicely and then we can begin with our floral material. Let's look at applying our focal flower to our design first. My focal flower for this piece are gonna be my Royal Porcelina Spray Roses and my Ranunculus. I'm gonna start by taking the Ranunculus, and as you've noticed, I've cut the stem right off directly underneath the flower head. I'm gonna take the cold glue and place a little bit of cold glue just over the end of the stem. That will help keep the moisture inside the flower and slow down the rate of transpiration. That means that the flower will live better for longer. Um, it'll help keep the moisture inside the bloom and overall it'll improve the quality and the life of the flower. I'm then gonna use the cold glue to place some all the way around the outside of the base of the stem. What this will do, this increases the uh, floral surface area of the material. So when I apply it to my art foam, it will have a greater surface area, which means that it will adhere to the surface quicker and have better bonding. So it will hold its place even better. I'm gonna place my flowers exactly where I want them to be in this design. And I'm gonna focus on placing my florals very much in a three, five, eight combination. When we talk about three, five, eight, we are referencing Fibonacci. We're referencing the divine ratio or the golden rule or the golden proportion. And I'm gonna be placing my, my florals in such a way so that it reflects this. I'm working first of all with my focal flowers. And I do this a lot with my designs as I can often enable myself to get those focal flowers exactly where they need to be, right in the center and then I can work around them with various other textures and various other smaller elements to bring the whole piece together. I'm gonna to work with 
the Ranunculus and the Royal Porcelina Spray Roses first, and then I'm going to follow up with the White Bubbles also. You'll see when I'm placing the cold glue, I'm placing it on the center and around the base. I'm not using the secondary gluing technique I'm going to demonstrate in this video. When I'm working with my bigger material, I always prefer to apply directly to the base of the flower. And when I'm using my smaller material, I'll be using a secondary gluing method, which involves a paper plate, which I'll show you in just a second. Now we've placed our focal flowers, we're gonna to start to place our secondary flowers. And this is really where it gets exciting, where we start to build in texture into the design. We're gonna start by taking these gorgeous little cyclamen blooms. With the cyclamen, I take them right off the plant, take a little bit of cold glue and just place it on the end of the stem, and then place a little bit on the side of the petal too. Now, cyclamen are one of my favorite flowers to use. A lot of people don't realize they last so well when glued or well wired, and we often use the leaves in individual buttonholes as well. For our next flower, we're gonna be working with these beautiful Astrantia heads. Tiny little bit of cold glue just on the end, and then we can nestle them deep within our design. There is a second technique I would love to show you with the Astrantia. To begin, we're gonna take a little bit of the Oasis Cold Glue, and we're gonna pour quite a significant amount directly onto the plate itself. Place the glue back upright in your container, and then we just take the individual heads of the Astrantia, one at a time, and just dip the edges of the heads in very, very lightly. We can then nestle these directly into the design, and this just makes the whole process a little bit quicker. After we've placed our Astrantia and our Cyclamen, we're now gonna to start to add in even more texture into our floral clutch. We're gonna start by taking these beautiful little spray roses. With the spray roses, I'm always sure to take off the calyx on the end of the spray rose. By trimming the edge of the calyx off, it allows us to have a much flatter base, which means that adhering them to any surface is much quicker and much easier. Again, we're gonna take the spray rose and dip it directly into the little pool of cold glue. It means that we can apply things quicker and easier into our piece. Next, working with the ranunculus buds and doing exactly the same. I'm layering the materials now. I like to think of these floral clutch bags as if they're almost impressionist paintings with lots of different little layers, lots of different little strokes of texture and color building up one after the other. And so we create a greater overall impression than all of the individual pieces combined. For the next step, I'm gonna take a little bit of the kangaroo paw, the Enzigoxanthus, place a little bit into the cold glue and just work this material directly through. We're now gonna add our final textural details. I'm gonna start with the fritillaria, the snake's head fritillaria, such a beautiful, exquisite flower. I'm gonna take the cold glue, pop a little bit just towards the end of the stem, and then a tiny little bit on the back of the head, and I'll be sure to nestle these deep within the design. One of the key things we've noticed when we're working with this type of floral design is that we don't wanna use any materials that are too prominent or too proud. We want them all to nestle through really, really gently because very simply, we don't want anything to be squashed when we close the clutch bag. We're next gonna move onto the Fritillaria persica. And I've taken the tiny little mauve heads from towards the top of the stem. We're just gonna dip the base of them into the cold glue and then we're gonna apply them directly into the floral texture. Each of these little buds has come from near the top of the stem. I wanted to try and avoid the very dark, deep kind of purple tones and just reference using the slight, the mauvey kind of lavender gray tones through, as I think this will blend better with the Ansego Xanthus and the other Fritillaria which we have within the design. Right near the end now, we're gonna place a little bit of the delicate 
Allium Neapolitium directly onto the surface. Now these gorgeous little materials we're going to use to highlight our placements. So we're going to focus them around our eight, our three, and our five within the design. So that's all our materials deep within the floral bag. As you can see, we've created a gorgeous carpet of different texture and color woven through the piece. We've got a very clearly defined focal area, a five up here and a three at the base as well, right here with the spray rose. This allows the eye to follow through the design. One of the key things, however, if we've kept the majority of our floral material deep within this outer rim, because when we look to close our clutch bag, we want to ensure that we don't have any botanical materials overlapping or trying to creep out of the bag. That wouldn't work so well for us. We don't want anything to be crushed and we really want to respect our floral materials. When we close up the bag, we can do so really carefully and really gently just by making sure that all our florals are neatly tucked within the bag really safely. And then as a final trick, we'll take off the protective layer over the top of the acrylic bag. And then we've got our floral clutch bag completely finished and pretty much ready to go. So let's talk about aftercare for our floral clutch. If I was making this for a wedding or event, I would look to make this around about 48 hours before the event. But aftercare is so important so that we can really maximize the vase life of our flowers. We need some water mister. We just missed very heavily inside the bag itself. What we would then do, we would then close this over, pop this into our floral cooler, and then bring it out the morning of the event. We can then just do a quick little check over the bag, make sure that nothing needs replacing or nothing's maybe got a little damaged in between uh, when we finish the bag and today. And then we will just open the bag back up and wipe over this front surface as well. What this will do is this will give us a nice clean, clear surface area when we present it to our client, but it means that our clutch bag is ready to go on the day of the event. Thank you so much. Guys, thank you so much for joining me today on today's mini course tutorial. I hope you found it super useful. And as ever, if you have any comments or questions on this particular tutorial, drop them below in the comments and myself and my team will reply to you as soon as we can. Before we finish today, I wanted to leave you on a few helpful little links. First of all, to find out more about our online courses and ebooks, head to www.learnjosephmassey.com. If you want to find out a little bit more about our flower class membership, head to learnjosephmassey.com forward slash membership, where you'll find all the information there. If you fancy taking a look at some more free resources, including our How I Made It podcasts and other articles, do head to josephmassey.com forward slash resources. And of course, you can catch me on Instagram at instagram.com forward slash Joseph Massey. Thank you so much for joining me today on this tutorial and I will look forward to seeing you next time. Take care guys.